All right, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we are muting our mics <clears throat> so that we can hear a testimony about battling with demons. And this was a battle. Hear this from Rashad. All right, so last night I probably got woken up for a good five or six times. Um, I don't know where this came from. I wasn't watching anything, or well, I didn't watch a movie, but it, it wasn't nothing evil or nothing like that from sleep and it's like I don't know what I was dealing with really but I feel like it was a demon because I couldn't move mm -hmm, yeah. and I just kept getting woken up throughout the night and paralysis. I would rebuke it yeah uh, sleep paralysis mm -hmm. I, I would rebuke it while I'm you know going through it you know and I go to sleep, and then a few minutes later, I don't know how long, the, I think like an hour will go by, and I'll get woken up again. And what made me think it was a spirit is because one of the times I woke up, and I couldn't move, and you know how there's a reflection on the, you know, a TV. If you walk past the TV, right. or someone walk past the TV, you can see off the reflection. Right. But I was laying there, and it was, you know, kind of like rebuking, you know, and I just noticed from the corner of my eye that I can see like something black move past the TV screen. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I couldn't. Yeah, I, I that couldn't probably tell, was a know. demon. Yeah, and and so I woke up and I started, you know, proclaiming the Lord, you know, the Lord and how he, he you know, I'm just like basically praising God and then taking my Bible and going throughout my apartment and pretty much cleansing my apartment. I got some oil plants in it. Yes. And uh, rebuking it and saying uh, Psalms 23 Good. and 27. Psalms 27 as well. And just kept doing it, kept doing it. Just, you know, you know, make a lot, you know, just kind of asking God to bring in the Holy Spirit, you know, right. kind of right. lighten up my atmosphere. Right, you know, right. I pray that like, a uh, lot too. Yes, because we, you know, we all we all deal with this at, at certain points. Mm -hmm. We all have those nights where the demons want to bother you. Even Pat, she and now now and then, I don't know if she has lately, but every so often, Pat will deal with it too, and she has to mm -hmm. rebuke them too and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So. Because I, you know, I wasn't doing that that night that could make that even happen, you know, or could me know, uh, normally, you know, probably, I don't know. Uh, but my thing is my faith, which <laughs> I just so happen to, I was supposed to be studying on it, but my faith is what I used last night. In Jesus' name, I, you know, I have faith in him and, you know, and that faith I use for you know, review these things and they cast them out. Right. And keep away from me. And, you know, stuff like that. So I just wanted to share that with y'all how, you know, even Christians, we still deal with that stuff. And you may have actually have them happen more frequently because of what you're, you know, your walk and what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And that's to be close to Christ. And they know that and they don't want you to get close to him. So they will start attacking you all kind of ways, not just in your regular everyday living, but also in your dreams, you sleep because you're more vulnerable when you're sleeping. So that's why it's good to pray over yourself before you go to sleep. But even sometimes you may pray over yourself and God may allow certain things to happen just so you can kind of work out or work your the, the gift that he has in you to kind of steer up that gift so he'll start having you, you know, even though you, it, just because it happens don't mean he's not protecting you, mm -hmm. but it just means that he's allowing it to happen so that you can, he can show you that you have the power that he has given you and that is to cast out demons and mm -hmm. travel and serve and sport and sport. And it's training it's too. It's training and practice. It's training, yeah, right. definitely. It's training right. me into, you know, what he is trying to get me into mm -hmm. because the fear is getting less and less and more becoming more of annoyance and right and that's and, what i'm talking about you know yes um, you know so i just gotta continue to ask god to give me that you know mm -hmm. it strengthened me of course because i'm still a human and we still have our moments and our weaknesses oh and, yeah but oh, yeah. you know it's less and less because if you keep going through something certain things your mind you, it, it stops become you can't keep being scared over and over and over and over and over and over. It's at a point it's going to get, get like, you going to be less and less afraid and more and more aggravated. And that will be the fuel for you to mm -hmm. get rid of what you're going through. Right. So if you get tired of something, 
You're like, I don't care how I feel. I don't care if I am scared or not scared. I'm ready for you to go Mm -hmm. at this point. Because you're getting on my nerves. I'm trying to sleep and you're Mm -hmm. messing with the sleep. It's time for me to kick your butt now. Right. And that's what using the word of God, using Jesus' name. Right. You're getting out of here. Mm-hmm. And then asking God to send his holy ministering guardian warrior angels to go after you if you try to come back again. That's right. So you, got, you gotta get you gotta get, you know, you gotta get serious. You gotta mm-hmm. get like uh, what's the word when you get um uh, you get bold? Yeah, um, uh-huh. You get adamant, you get uh Yeah. It's, 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 it, yeah, it's like this attitude comes on you. You say, I am tired of getting my butt kicked by some little silly demon. Right. Yeah. That's right. So, yep. Uh, my testimony, guys. Mm-hmm. Hope it helps someone. Oh, it should. It should. See, a lot of times we don't realize how important it is to know our rights in the Bible. And a lot of us don't understand the authority Jesus gave us in his name. Now, I remember I told you guys this a while back when I was in the hospital. And that's another reason why you have to be careful who you let pray for you. There was a man who came with his wife. And I'll never forget it. He used to give me a ride to church when I was going to that particular church up here. And he, he and I got in a conversation about the Holy Spirit. And he said he never experienced God. He doesn't know if he's filled with the Holy Spirit. His wife, he said, even asked him, have you ever been filled with the Holy Spirit? Now, here's the thing I want to share with you. When he came, he and his wife came to pray for me at the hospital when I was in ICU. He and his wife prayed, he left, and and his wife worked at that hospital, by the way. But, uh, okay, they left, and all night I battled demons. All night they harassed me. Some of them are called harassing spirits. They will harass you and harass Mm -hmm. you and bug you and and meddle with you and, and... come and, sh- and show up in your face and then infiltrate your dreams and change the atmosphere. It's really a trip. Um, I have had, uh, I've laid in the bed and felt a demon put his hand over my eyes, I mean, over my nose and the other one over my mouth trying to smother me. And see, when you cannot articulate, you say it anyway. And my mouth was covered like this, so this is what it sounded like. And I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Poof, gone. Didn't have to say it 10 times. It was gone that first time. But the nasty feeling that went with it, it was this dark, eerie feeling and his hands felt unclean and dirty and fuzzy and creepy. It was a nasty feeling. Now, sometimes when you're attacked by demons, You have to say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That's number one. Number two, you say, "Uh, no weapon formed against me will prosper. That's from Isaiah 54. Or you can quote Psalms 23. Now, when I was unsaved, and this is for those of you who are not saved, God's word does not return to him void, no matter how it's being spoken. I was unsaved at the time and I felt an evil come to my house and come in my house and it scared the boo-boo out of me. And I picked up the old dusty, rusty Bible that nobody in my family read except my mother once in a while. And I read that thing. I went straight to Psalms 23. That was the one scripture my mother knew by heart and it was the only one I heard her quote all the time. So that's where I went. It's all I knew. And that's all I needed was one word. And I took that scripture and I quoted, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And I went on and read through the whole thing. And when I got through, evil was gone. So you rebuke them in the name of Jesus. That's your weapon and your seal. You read or quote God's word against it, okay? That's your sword of the spirit. 
And number three, you praise God. You glorify God. That confuses the enemy. So whatever you do, that's the reason why we as born-again Christians are always admonished. Read the word, read the word, get it in your spirit, get it in your mind, memorize it. Because there'll be a time when you're attacked and you don't have the Bible at your disposal. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? I have fallen. I was going to vote against gay marriage. And I was on my way. I was rushing because I was in the last 20 minutes of getting there. And I only had five more minutes to go. I would have been there 10 minutes before they closed to get my vote in because I had been working all day. And all of a sudden, it was as if something came behind me and threw me. I went flying through the air and landed on my hands, arms, knees, feet, flat on the ground, on the cement, on the pavement. And as I laid there, as soon as it happened, I said, no weapon. I'm down there. I'm shaking. But I said, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Satan, you will not stop me from doing what I know God's word says. I will stand for God's word. I will stand for God's way. And I'm going to put my vote in whether you like it or not. Get out of my face and get off of me. No weapon as I dusted myself off formed against me will prosper. In Jesus' name. And I got my little happy hips up off that ground and kept on going to the place, did not have a scratch or a scrape, and put my vote in. I felt like I was, I was on assignment that night. See, Satan will attack you in many different ways, but you have to have the Holy Ghost balls to stand up to him. He's like the toothless bully. When he finds out that you ain't taking it, He's in the wind because he can't take what you can throw at him. But he wants you to think that you can't take what he's going to throw at you. Now we have another testimony from Andrea. And you guys are going to learn how to battle demons when this video is over. Okay, go on, Andrea. In my dream, um, I knew I was sleeping. Like I knew that I was dreaming. And I was in my room, and I saw, like, a figure kind of in the corner. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I started singing some rock song. I can't even remember. I just started singing some rock song, almost as if I was trying to ignore it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm not scared of you. Mm -hmm. Let me just pretend you're not there. And uh, I couldn't, you know, the figure was just black. But then I saw, like, it was laughing, and its face just... All of a sudden, it had a face and it contorted. It was really gross looking. And um, I was like, crap, I gotta do something about this. So I, I started to try to say, I rebuke you and anything like Jesus. Mm -hmm. But uh, I couldn't get words out. So it was muffled. Mm -hmm. That's and I always happened. Mm -hmm. I always ended up getting muffled. Mm -hmm. I, had, I, had, I had to fight. Yeah. Basically, wake myself up. Mm hmm. So I keep going mm, 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 over and over and over and over again, and I'm just tired. It wears me out. I think it's, it's you know, even though nothing is on me most of the time, it, it feels like I'm wrestling something that yeah. I can't see. It makes me really tired. Yeah, yeah, wrestling demons yeah. does sap your strength. It does. Yeah. So then I woke up at about 3 in the morning, and I couldn't go back to sleep. Uh, till about 3.45, I laid down anyways, um, and uh, then the next day I got difficult news, and I just had a difficult day, and I remember being like, okay, I'm tired, I just got really crappy news, uh, my coworker is being a total just jerk, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I should just go home, you know, I should just be like, I can't do this and just leave. And, you know, I'm feeling like I'm about to do it. And then all of a sudden I said, hold up. The world is not going to end because you're having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 you know, right. I was like, yeah, I was like, dang, I'm going to get ready. Uh, like, I had this whole little fight, inner fight with myself. But 
it was like, no, we're not doing this. And and then I remember what happened uh-huh. the night before. I was like, see, this is an attack. Right. Exactly what that is. And I ain't about to drop out like that. So Thank we're just going to get over it, boo-boo. Eat some sweet potato fries. Have a, get some ice cream. Stay out for a second. But you ain't going home yet. So, you know, I calmed down. Finished the day. And I was all right. See that? But, uh, sometimes it just seems to happen. It's like they know tomorrow, the next day, is going to be good. So they want to get you tired. And irritable. Vulnerable. But it's good to know that you are tired and vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And lately, every time I know, you know, I don't get any sleep, let me wash my back. Uh-huh. I just uh-huh. know. I'm like, hmm, this is, this is not good. I'm tired. Let me be careful. Mm-hmm. We walk cautiously today, you know. We, yes. Let me say to myself, mm-hmm. let me say I'm wrong, or whatever. So, but yeah, that was mine. Just same as Rashad, just you know, freaking mm-hmm. trying to mess with us. Yep, yep. Wow. Let me go back on this real quick. I know some of you guys, when you, when you heard mine, and I blame the guy for the a demonic attack when, you know, that could have been just random. Well, the second time he came with another member of the church and he prayed for me the second time before I had a chance to shut it down. He already started in. She prayed and then he jumped in. I was getting ready to cut it off, but he jumped in and it was like, okay, they're on a roll. So under my breath, I'm like, no, Satan, you're not going to mess with me. But I'm telling you, that night was the same type of battle. And I said, wow, now I know where the source came from. I will talk to him privately and let him know he will never pray for me again until he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if he's not filled with the Holy Spirit, who knows what spirit he's been driven by. And I didn't want to deal with it. So anyway, just to share that. But see how Andrea mumbled anyway? Now, when she got through giving her testimony, she mumbled because demons understand it. Even that they try to muffle you because they want you to think that if you can't say it, there's no need in trying. No, you say it even if you can't move your tongue. If all you can do is uh, and grunt, say, I bind you or I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave and never return. Always say never return. Uh, that's what Jesus used to say. He would cast out a demon and tell it never to return. So remember those details. Remember, because if you're a born again Christian and you're walking with Christ, you will be attacked at some point in your life. But you must know what to do about it. You can't play the victim and let the bully tear your behind up. It doesn't go like that. That's not the way Jesus created us. So anybody else have anything to add to that? And then we're going to stop this video. Yep. So um, a similar thing happened to me, but it was actually my fault. Like I didn't know unintentionally it was my fault. Mm-hmm. And so um, where I was physically pinned and like I couldn't talk or anything at all. Um, and when I realized what was going on and I tried to call out for help, I couldn't. There was like not, not even, just maybe like a crack of air. And I didn't, I tried with everything in me to move. I tried with everything in me to scream because I had my little kids. One was like months old and the other one was one and we were on a high bed and I was on the edge and they were by the wall, but it was really scary that I couldn't do that because I didn't know if there's something would happen to them, I would have been pinned there. couldn't do nothing. Right, right. And as soon as I realized I couldn't um, say, ask for help or say Jesus' name out loud, mm-hmm. I just cried out in my heart because I said in my in my mind, I said, Jesus, like, I know you hear me. It doesn't have to be my voice. You know my heart. So I cried out in my mind and my heart as loud as I, like, I screamed it with all of my heart, but it was nothing. It was just like a mental thing, I guess. And immediately that thing was ripped off me and I flew like off the bed, like three feet and just like was able to get up. But You don't even have to have that voice, but the Lord knows our hearts and hears our very cry of our hearts. That's why there's times that you can pray internally and the Lord hears every prayer. That's right. I mean, it's very good. It's very good for warfare to be loud and to to pray those things out loud. But the Lord hears us even 
if we don't have that voice. Right. Imagine what it's like for deaf people or for deaf mutes who can't speak or for mm -hmm. mutes who can hear but can't speak. You know that either sign language or their thought life has got to get the prayer through. God can hear all prayer, spoken and unspoken, because he doesn't need a voice box to get the word across. He doesn't need us to have one either. This is for our benefit. We can hear each other. But God hears you. He hears your spoken and unspoken prayers. God bless you guys. Thank you very much, Andrea, Rashad, Davina, for sharing your testimonies. They're very powerful. And hopefully you guys have learned something about spiritual warfare from these messages. We're going to have a lesson from Marlene next. And she's going to teach on one of the weapons of our warfare.